Today is Saturday, May 21st, 2016, and this is the Bunny Slippers of Evil Job Seekers Call-In Show, presented by Evil Bunny Consulting. I'm your host, Tyrone Griffin, and if it's 3 p.m., you have on your bunny slippers, you are not looking for a job. Welcome, first-time and returning listeners. In this show, we discuss strategies and tactics of job search, staying motivated, and dealing with career transition. For more tips, resources, daily motivations, and to listen to archive shows, go to the website, bunnyslippersareval.com. They will also find links to our Facebook page, our Twitter handle, and our YouTube channel. If you are listening live, you can call in with your questions at 347-202-0929. Again, that number is 347-202-0929. And now a word from our sponsors. Evil Bunny Consulting is the job search alternative to expensive outplacement. They have company-sponsored job search workshops as well as a one-on-one job search boot camp. For more information, go to bunnyslippersarevo.com. Resume Edit is the high-quality resume writing company of certified resume writers, starting at just $35. You can find them online at resume4edit.com or call 404-860-2473. And be sure to tell them you heard about them on the Bunny Slippers of Evil Job Seekers Podcast. Let 3DResumes.net turn your resume to a web page with a customized domain for 12 months for only $30. Help hiring managers and recruiters find you, make your resume available 24-7, and get a professional email address just for your job search. You can see my online resume at tyronegriffin.com. For more information on how to get your own, go to 3dresumes.net. If you're thinking or about to look for a job in today's world, you'll find a new reality in the job search process. The world has changed. Job search today is much more complicated than five years ago. Volumes of resumes, more applicant screening systems, depersonalized applications, panel interviews, team hiring, long complicated applications, branding and social media. Yes, the world has changed. But if you, are you still trying yesterday's approach? Why struggle and miss out on today's opportunities? Career Oyster is here to help. Great coaches, the latest resources, unique strategies, personally tailored to your job search. Find out the new reality and how you can prevent costly mistakes. To register for a free 45-minute private session with head coach Howard Caddy, go to careeroyster.com. Find the facts now. You'll be glad you did. Remember their motto, the world is your oyster, be the pearl. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another week. Um, First, everybody who was listening last week, I truly apologize. I had some major computer trouble. And I mean, to the, the kind of computer trouble where it really got resolved last night. Um, I'm going to put a video up, believe it or not. I uh, uh, It's going to be pretty good, too, I think. But uh, I apologize. Uh, we had a great, um, great speaker, great guest last week, Brandon Brainer, uh, the recruiter, and which is leading into this week's show, the follow-up show. He's not on, but I'm just going to follow up with some tips on how you should be dealing with, with recruiters. But um, great show. But again, I apologize to everybody. Uh, coming, going forward, the next couple of weeks are going to be, uh, I'll say, interesting. I don't know if I'll be doing a show next week. And the reason being is because my uh, son is graduating from high school Friday night. And we're having a cookout Saturday. Uh, so as much as I love you guys, I don't know if I'll be able to squeeze a half hour in through all that to do the show. And then the next week after that... Uh, I will be on vacation. I'll be on the last day of my vacation, so uh, I can't guarantee I will do a show. I can't guarantee I won't. Uh, it probably would all depend on how the vacation goes. So the next two weeks will be kind of iffy. Um, so I apologize now. Um, love all you guys, but, you know, um, yeah. So, but uh, just say a prayer for a prayer for me and my, my family. You know, again, my son is graduating. Uh, long road, great kid. Um, extremely, extremely proud of him. Uh, thankful, um, and I uh, hope he has great things in his future. But anyway, so that's next week and the week after. Uh, I just can't guarantee what the show schedule will be. But. Um, after that, we'll be right back on a regular schedule. And um, going forward, um, you know, being empty nester now, uh, or soon, in a couple of months, um, I should be able to do a lot more things with the show. Um, 
that I've done in the past. So I got some ideas on some things that I just haven't had a chance to do, um, haven't had a chance to implement and work on because, you know, I was raising a kid and, you know, trying to get him squared away. But um, I appreciate your all your patience all these years. Um, I'm glad I'm still doing the show. I still can't believe I'm still doing the show. So, But anyway, enough of that. But I just wanted to let you know the next two weeks might be kind of iffy. I'm not saying I will produce. I'm not saying I won't. It's just going to be iffy. So with that said, um, today's topic is uh, we're following up last week's, and this week is called Working with Recruiters. Now, I'm not going to rehash the things that uh, Brandon uh, pointed out last week. He made, gave us some great, great information. Uh, I'm going to have him on again. I didn't want to do it this week because I didn't know what the state of my computer was going to be. Um, but I've definitely, I've, you know, he's agreed. You heard him publicly. He agreed to come back. So um, I love putting people on the spot like that. But um, well, anyway, so what I'm talking about today is just you know, some more tips on just uh, working with recruiters. Uh, you know, first thing you got to remember that recruiters are people. Um, they're not magicians. The funny thing, when we're in transition, we have, you know, I had it too. We get this idea that uh, hiring managers and, and recruiters and, and, and kind of everybody working, you know, is like some magical, mystical creature, some unicorn. You know, it's like people are actually working. You know, I, I've told you, you know, I gained a, a better respect, and I apologize for not having it up front, but I gained a better respect for people who worked at places like Walmart. Um, you know, when you go in there at night, uh, you know, 1 o'clock in the morning or midnight or 11 o'clock, whatever time, and there are people in there stocking the shelves, and you're thinking, you know what, they're working, and I'm not. I can't get a job, you know. So um, for a change, so it changes the way, the way your, your outlook is. But working with a recruiter, remember, these are people. They put their pants on one leg at a time. Hiring managers, uh, uh, C-level executives, they all put their pants on or their dress, as it, as it may be, uh, the same way that we all do. They're people. Um, so don't get caught up in the mysticism. It's like um, it's easy to, 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 when you see a, we meet a recruiter, it's easy to get caught up in the <laughs> of it all. Um, and to think that, um, you know, they, they can help you with your career. It's kind of like I think with people, you know, who want to get into the music industry, when they meet some, you know, whoever the hot musician is, um, Katie Clark or whoever is hot right now, and they meet her, and they get it, you know, I want to get into music so bad, da, 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 and can you help me out? And, and, and they, you know, yes, this person can open doors for you, but... Remember, this person is just doing their job. Okay, this person is um, a normal person. Um, they want your help as bad as you want their help. You know, uh, recruiters. Every recruiter I've ever met, none of them ever want a a bunch of weak uh, resumes. And I say weak is not just the experience and the education is the organization, the format, the things you've done, more so the experience, I guess, yeah. Um, but no recruiter wants a weak bench. They want a strong bench. They want people that they know they can, um, you know, count on. Um, you remember, you know, you are representing them. Um, so, and that's one of the points I was going to make later, but I'll, but I'll bring it up now. Um, when you go see, if you when you catch with a recruiter and ask you to come on down, let's talk about some opportunities that we might have. They're interviewing you, you know, even though they don't, they're not hiring. They know where jobs are, or they might know, but they're interviewing you. Don't don't make any mistake about it. They are interviewing you. If you show up to an interview with a recruiter you know, first meeting of whatever they want to call it, you know, let's get acquainted, find out who you are, what you want, blah, blah. They're interviewing you. And if you are trying to get a middle manager position, uh, you don't show up in uh, jeans, holy jeans. You know, you show up in a suit, even though you say, well, I'm just going to meet the recruiter. You want to give a good first impression. You want to, you want people to want to work with you. 
that's the thing as as a recruiter you want people to want to work with you want people to want to go out of their way uh most recruiters you know let's be honest like like most of us they're motivated by dollars you know i love my job but truth be told if they stop making payroll that office will be pretty empty pretty quick um but recruiters are, are you know they're trying to get a, they're trying to you know pay their bills and feed their and support their families so when you go to interview with them, when you go meet them to the initial, let's get acquainted, find out who you are, um, wear a suit. Don't go in business casual, wear a suit. Wear it. first impressions, people. First impressions are very important and you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Okay, you don't get it. So, oh, excuse me, sorry about that. So, um, you know, impress this person because you think of your meet with a recruiter, the same thing when you do an informational interview with someone uh, who maybe doesn't have a position, but you want them to help you get a foot into the door of a company that you're looking at. Um, do you want them to leave the, the meeting with you going, oh man, this guy or this woman is awesome. You know, you want them saying, I got to find this person something because they are awesome and I'm gonna make a ton of money. Okay, that's what you want a recruiter thinking, that, they, they, that you are a person that can be easily placed in a variety of different levels of opportunities. Not just, you know, it, you may be looking at middle management and they may have something that might be a little stretch but they say you have the right attitude, you have the right impression, you give the right impression, okay? And they say, well, you know what, Let us uh, let me look at you for this position. You know, your recruiter can be your best friend or your worst enemy without you knowing, okay? You impress your recruiter, and I, I'll tell you from experience, you impress your recruiter, they are in your corner and they will, will, will uh, fight for you, you know? Um, hypothetical situation. They're trying to fill a position and they've sent several people over and the hiring managers doesn't like anybody they've sent. And they can say, okay, we will, you know, keep looking. Or he can say, you know what, I got somebody. Why don't you have a talk with them? And, uh, and a hiring manager might go, oh, oh, I don't want to waste my time. Say, I don't think you'd be wasting your time. Why don't you have a talk with this person? You know, they don't have whatever, they may not have all the requirements on paper. But this guy's, or this, woman is, is pretty impressive. Why don't, you, uh, why don't you have a talk with her? The hiring manager said, okay, send him over. Bam, you got an interview and maybe you have an interview for something that on paper you aren't qualified for. But because you gave the right impression to the recruiter, he or she decided, let me try to push this person. And there have been people that have ended up with jobs that way, you know, just because they gave the right impression. So when you go to that recruiter, it's, it's like, the, 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 what comes to mind for me is, and you know, many of you guys know I love Apple, you know, Apple computer, I've been a follower of Apple since, oh gosh, I can't tell you when. Um, for your old heads, I'll just say this. I, I, when I picked my computer up last night, I told uh, the people at the desk, I said, I put memory in an SE30. And one, the woman was like, what's an SE30? And the guy was like, wow, you know. Okay, that was a rat hole. It had nothing to do with anything. Uh, kind of did, so take a sip. If you're drinking the drinking, if you're, if you're enjoying the drinking game, take a sip. Um, no, but the reason I brought up Apple is because they are a company that sweats the details of everything. Um, one of the things that, one of the reasons that people are looking forward to Apple making a, a car is that they sweat the details. 10 years ago, when, when it was rumored that Apple was getting into uh, phones, yeah, there was a time before the iPhone, but when um, there was a, a rumor that Apple was getting into phones and they rolled out with the first iPhone, the thing that got everybody was right out the box. They sweated the details. You know, the design, the curves. They didn't just say, oh, here's a box of granite and let's carve it out and go from there. 
They sweated the details, how the screens work. And, you know, you say, yeah, of course they did. But there's a lot of companies that don't do that. And not just the computer industry. There's a lot of companies that we interact with every day that don't sweat details, that make products that are good enough, but they're not great products. They're not insanely great products. Uh, Microsoft had been making a tablet for years, maybe five or ten years before the first iPad came out. Uh, Microsoft had, had been selling a tablet and it wasn't selling. Apple came out and crushed it in like a year, you know, because they sweated the details. My, my, my point is, you know, they don't leave anything unturned. Apple is famous for that, you know, that they don't leave any stones unturned. They don't leave anything to chance. Okay. Um, in your job search, you have to be the same way. Don't leave anything to chance. Don't. The day you let your guard down, ah, uh, it's not, you know, this is not a big meeting. I can, um, I, I can wear some jeans to this one. It's not, you know, it's not going to be a, you know, no big shots are going to be there. You know, I don't have to, you know, brush my teeth, whatever. That's the day the CEO walks into your meeting and says, please proceed. And you're sitting there looking like an idiot because you didn't sweat the details. Okay. Uh, in your job search, you sweat the details. Okay, the details, I think, and a lot of things are the things that most people uh, remember more than the broad strokes. You know, you look at a, a, a Picasso painting and you look at the strokes, you know, how the strokes went. You know, stand back, sure, you look at the whole painting, but it's the strokes. Um, I was doing some a forecast a couple of weeks ago at work and I was... Um, Explaining to a coworker, a junior coworker, about forecasts, and I, you know, I told him, forecast is not about the numbers. It's not about the number you come up with. It's about the methodology. If you come up with a bad number that nobody likes, they're going to ask you, "How'd you get to that number?" And if you go and you can walk them through the steps and go, "Yeah," and they go, "Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you're right." Okay, then that's what the number is. If you come up with a great number and they go, "How'd you come up with that?" Oh, I pulled it out of my butt. No, that's not going to fly. Sweat the details. Sweat all the details. Because, again, the day you don't sweat a detail is the day that that detail comes back to haunt you, comes back to bite you. So when you're meeting with your recruiters, when you're meeting with anyone related to your job search, I mean, uh, any formal or um, official meeting. Now, granted, you, run in, you might run into somebody at the grocery store um, and you're not in your suit and tie. You know, that's understandable. But if you're going to somebody's office, uh, or you meet somebody for lunch, even, or you know, casual lunch or casual breakfast. Um, dress your best. It's better to be overdressed than underdressed. This one of the lessons you know, I'm trying to teach my, my my son. It's better to be overdressed than underdressed. If you're overdressed, people say, "Oh, you stand up because everybody's got on a a, a, a shirt and blazer, and he's got a tuxedo." Well, you can take the tie off and unbutton the collar, and you will better fit in. But if you show up to a formal event with a plaid jacket, a striped shirt, and solid green pants and golf shoes, because you chill like that, uh, you can't dress up. You can't. You can't save that. <laughs> you know, really, that's the nice way to say you can't save that. Um, so, dress your, you know, your best. Um, on that note, on the details. Um, my theory. This is my opinion. If you're gonna have a pocket square. Uh, a, a handkerchief in your pocket or whatever um, for formal for a, a business event don't have a big poofy flower one that's at least not at the initial interview uh, have something again this is my opinion a nice folded you know white or whatever color handkerchief where all you see is the line coming out of the pocket um, you know just sweat the details you know um, Make sure your tie knot looks good. You know, if you don't know how to tie a tie, get on Google and find out. You know, one of my biggest things lately has been bow ties. So I've had to teach myself how to tie a bow tie um, because I don't, pref pref I don't prefer the clip-on ones. But you got to sweat those details. It's amazing how much better a, a tied bow tie looks than one that's the and you're done.
Um, but sweat those, those are the kinds of details you need to sweat, and especially when you're in job search. Uh, shine your shoes. If you don't, can't afford to shine them, uh, if they're, you know, particularly if they're patent leather, or if they're leather, you know, get a, get a damp towel. When you come out of the shower, take your towel. Yeah, I know a few tricks. Take your towel and just wipe them good. Get them from, they're not dusty. Um, but sweat the details. Okay, when you meet that recruiter, when you're in their office, sweat those details. Okay, make them know that, yes, this is important to me. Okay? This job, that did, meeting you is important to me. Let them know that. Okay. Um, excuse me. Oh, oh manage the relationship. It is a relationship. And it can be a very fruitful relationship in the long term, even if it doesn't appear that way in the short term. Uh, I can say from personal experience. Um, I told you, recruiter hired, he called me out of the blue five years after we had, we, we lost touch. He kept my number. Five years later, he called me. And from that, I ended up in the position I'm in now. Um, but, you know, you can say, well, you didn't manage that relationship real well. No, but I didn't burn the bridge either. Okay. Um, he couldn't help me at the time. He couldn't help me. That was a, he had nothing for me. Don't, again, recruiters put the pants and dresses and panties and underwear on the same way you do. I think. I hope. They're not Gandalf the Great. You know, they are just people. They have positions sometimes, sometimes they don't. When they don't have positions, it's not that they don't want them. They just don't have anything available. Be gracious. Be courteous. Say thank you for thinking of me and, and move on and ask them to keep hold of your number. You know, if something else comes up, please let you know. Leave them with a good taste in your mouth. I know there's a good visual on that and I'm not going to get into it, but leave them happy for knowing you. You know, and like I said, five years after I'd last spoken to this guy and I still had his number in my phone. And when he called, it was like, your name popped up. And I'm, okay, I remember this guy, you know, but when we had worked together before, he didn't have an opportunity for me, but he remembered me. Okay, I, I, I left a good impression on him. Now people get caught up thinking, well, you know, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh yeah, it do, it do, it do. Yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Unless you live out in the desert in a, in a hut by yourself, you know, um, you will get opportunities. Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Been up at five o'clock, went to the gym. But, and I'm tired now. <laughs> I gotta clean all day. Sorry, mini rat hole, take a shot for that one. Um, but, you know, you, 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 you give, it's important, it is important what people think of you, um, particularly in, in your job search. You know, you want people to work with you to help you on your job search, it's very important what they think of you. It's very important that they like you. And chances are you're a very likable person if you just be kind and courteous. It's not butt kissing or brown nosing. Just be kind and courteous. And why would that get people to like you? Because there are so few people who are kind and courteous. That's the sad part. There are so few people who actually practice kindness and cur courtesy. Okay? Or courtesy. Yeah. There are so few people that practice it. So when you do practice it, you stand out. Okay? That's the reality. Okay? So be kind and courteous. Be humble. People love being humble. Be humble with your recruiter. You know, and recognize the relationship as they can help you. Um, yes, you can help them, but you are one of millions who they are probably reaching out to. Make make sure that they remember you. That when they talk when they talk about opportunities that might fit your background, that you're the first name. Okay, manage that relationship. You don't have to send them flowers unless you just want to. Um, but manage the relationship. Be courteous. Be kind. Be persistent. Um, stay in touch with them. Um, once you land, every now and then, just shoot an email off to recruiters and say, hey, thanks you for, you know, trying to help me. I just want to let you know what I'm doing now. Um, you know, you don't have to be looking to move. You know, they'll reach out to you from time to time. Hey, you thinking about doing something? Because, you know, I still get it every now and then. But manage that relationship and manage it in such a way that nobody walks away bad and pissed off. Okay, so manage it. Be nice. Be courteous. Be kind to your recruiter. Um... Excuse me. Finally, um, I always say this, and I'll repeat it again. It is still, still, still your job search. Now, what happens with most recruiting firms, um, unless they are paid a you know 
I'm assuming they're either paid a, a flat fee for finding somebody for a position or they're paid a percentage based on the person's salary, starting salary. So um, a particular what kind of consulting company you work for, if you work a recruiting recruiter, you work with them, sorry. Some recruiters are just, you know, they find jobs and fill them. And some recruiters work for, um, for consulting firms where they will send you out and you're working for them versus working for the client. And, you know, you'll get paid X dollars an hour maybe, and they will, you know, unknown to you, they will get another percentage per hour. Um, and that's how they make their money. So, so the longer you stay employed, the longer they get paid. I think it's not the whole time, it's like for six months or whatever it is. Um, but all that aside, remember, it's your job search. It is your job search. It's not anybody else's job search. Okay, in the case of recruiters, yeah, they're going to get a cut of what you make, so they have a vested interest. They have skin in the game, as they say. So they have a vested interest in you succeeding in the position. But don't get it twisted. Again, it goes back to the simple fact it still is your job search. Okay, it still is yours. And as much as people will help you or won't help you, it is still your job search and don't ever forget that okay and you are responsible and accountable for anything that happens if you if and when you land it was because of you even though you had a lot of people help you had to do certain things so anyway um that's a follow-up for dealing with, with recruiters um hope you enjoyed it hope it made sense um so anyway thank you for listening if you are listening on the website, feel free to subscribe to this podcast in iTunes. And if you like the show, please leave feedback so others can find the show. And I truly appreciate it. If you have a suggestion or a topic you would like me to cover in either the podcast or a one-minute bunny tip, send it to me at Tyrone at BunnySlippersRevil.com. And when you land, please don't forget us. Please support the show by visiting our Cafe Press store and buying a t-shirt a water bottle, a coffee mug, a clock, or a sweater. You can get our stuff on all kinds of things um, so that you will have a memento of your time in transition because I don't want you to ever forget these times. I don't want you, and I know people who, who've done it. Um, they land a job, and it's a great job, and they're working and everything is fine and you start to realize there's some things that they're doing that are totally against um, common sense sometimes um, their own best interest and you look at them and, and you know and it's crazy when it's somebody that you know who was out of work at one point and you see them get back to work and they forgot what it's like, you know, they don't, um, and you know, okay, I'm weird. You know, I will go back from time to time. Like I went to Rumsey a couple of uh, weeks ago. I would go back and talk to people in transition because I remember what it was like and I remember how much it sucked. And, you know, I will go back and, and try to help, try to do what I can to help people. Um, but I want you to forget that, you know, if you've been out there, that it's like getting burned by the stove. Put your finger on the stove and get burned. It's that kind of thing. Once you do it, it hurts. But over time, you forget it. And you might forget what it feels like. And if you do, you'll put your money out there. Well, you know, you learn from it. So my point is, what is my point? Just a rambling here. Um, no, we were talking about, you know, be, be, be thankful. If you have a job, be thankful. You know, when you're out, of, you're out of work in transition, you make yourself all kinds of promises. You know, if I get a job, I will be the baddest so-and-so in the world. I will be the hardest working. I will eat, sleep, and drink, and pee, whatever company it is that uh, I'm working for. I will never steal a pencil. I will never do any. I will be the greatest employee in the history of employees in the world. And you get a job, and a couple of months later, you start slacking off a little bit. And next thing you know, you're like, yeah, whatever, you know. So anyway... Anyway, back to why I want you to have a momentum because I don't want you to forget this stuff. Because the moment you forget what it was like in transition is when you put yourself in a position where you could end up right back there again. Whew, got through it. Anybody, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, I'll let you know what happens next week. I'll let you know if I'm doing the show. Most likely not, but 
keep, keep in touch, stay in tune, take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great week. Bye-bye.